He says, and this is on page uh, 72 of his account, he says, when all these things are lacking, there is no culture. There is, in the strictest sense of the word, barbarism. And let us not deceive ourselves. This is what, this is what is beginning to appear in Europe under the progressive rebellion of the masses. The traveler who arrives in a barbarous country knows that in that territory there are no rules, principles to which it is possible to appeal. So the tourist arrives in a barbaric country and immediately recognizes that it's barbaric because there are no rules that I can appeal to outside of the rules necessitated by those in power in that specific country. Properly speaking, there are no barbarian standards. Barbarism is the absence of standards to which appeal can be made. So, if we're attempting to make an account of civility, and we're asking ourselves, what does it mean to be civilized, according to Gazette? Because many, many different theories have many, many different accounts of civility. But according to Gazette, what does it mean to be civilized? Gazette says, to be civilized is fundamentally to recognize that an individual at all times in his political life has to make appeals to authority outside of his or her own authority. So make, I make an appeal to the authority of another, or the authority of some other institution. Barbarism is precisely um, the contrary to that. Barbarism, which I would argue um, is synonymous with um, sort of the dogmatic state, right? Dogmatism, but according to how Gisette's defining it, is the appeal to self, right? It is the way that it is because I say it is the way that it is. So the example that I've given in previous videos, my daughter comes up to me and says, hey, daddy, can I go outside and play? I say no. She says why? I say because I said so. That's dogmatic. I am not making appeal to something outside of myself. My daughter comes to me and says, daddy, can I go out and, outside and play? I say no. She says why? I say because it's dark. I'm making appeal to the idea of it being dark. This opens up the possibility for my daughter and I to engage in a discourse on why is it because it's dark, dark that I can't go outside? And we have this discussion. But as we said before, the mass man is not going to engage in any discussion with the other, right? There is no reason for me to engage in discussion with you. I have access to the truth, and that truth makes me perfect. You don't have access to the truth. You have this idea that I cannot, by definition, incorporate into the totality of my ideas. Therefore, you need to change this idea to conform to my ideas. If you refuse to change your idea to conform to my ideas, then I'm going to kill you. And in killing you, this idea no longer exists. Furthermore, all those people who have the ideas that you have are potential threats to my idea that I have the totality of ideas. Therefore, I am now obligated in killing you for this idea to also kill everyone who has the similar idea that you have. Because in just killing you, there's, I haven't done anything successful. Because now Mary pops up and Mary says, um, no, you don't have the totality of ideas. And Bob pops up and Bob says, no, you don't have the totality of ideas. So if I, t if I killed you for this idea, I have to kill, I'm now obligating myself because of this right to vulgarity, to kill every individual who argues against my idea, right? And that is barbarism at its finest, right? That's how uh, Gisette is defining barbarism. So in, uh, on page 73, um, what he now does is he normalizes this imposition. And let's see what he says with respect to this. So, under the species of syndicalism, and I'll discuss this maybe in a different lecture, in fascism, there appears, for the first time in Europe, a type of man who does not want to give reason or to be right. There appears the type of man who doesn't want to give reason. I'm not trying to rationalize with you. I'm not trying to reason with you, right? I'm not trying to have a discussion with you. I'm going to tell you what you need to do, and you're going to do it but simply shows himself resolved to impose his opinion, right? He, he is resolved simply to impose his opinion. There is no discussion. There is no deliberation. There is what I say, and there is what you're going to do. There's a fabulous scene in, uh, I mean, I don't want to digress too much, but anything that Quentin Tarantino uh, produces is just sheer genius, right? I love all of his movies. 
and in Glorious Bastards, uh, there's the scene where the commander comes, and he comes to, it's the opening scene, to the, the small uh, dairy farmer's house. And he enters in this, what seems to be a very polite conversation about rodents and infestation and the Jews and so on and so forth. Uh, and the conversation becomes, it turns, right? And it, it's, a, it's a very specific point at which the conversation between the commander and the dairy farmer turns. The commander goes to the dairy farmer. He says, um, I'm going to let you know that if you are hiding anyone, hiding Jews in your home, and you let me know, there won't be any punishment for you at all. And the dairy farmer immediately recognizes that he, the dairy farmer, cannot make an appeal to anything but what was just given him. That's the, that's the last straw of hope that he has for himself and his own family, is to basically um, snitch, to rat out the very people that he's saving. Right? He recognizes if he doesn't inform and, 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 and tell the commander that he is in fact hiding Jews under the floorboards, that not only are they going to die, but he and, he and his daughters are going to die, right? He realizes that at that specific moment, there is an appeal to anything other than the SS men who are in the house that he can make, make right? You can't go and talk to the local authorities because the local authorities are going to make the same appeal that he made to themselves and their power, right? What ends up happening is that this power becomes totalizing. There isn't a place for you to escape, right? There's nowhere to run. There's nowhere to hide. So the dairy farmer, um, conflicted though he may be, makes the only decision he can make, right? Um, obviously there's another decision is to die with integrity. But it's easier said than done, and that's, why, that's exactly why Tar Tarantino is a genius is because it might be the claim that all of us could say, oh, I would die with integrity if I were hiding those Jews for all those months. I would never, I would never, um, I would never tell uh, the, the commander where they were. I would die with integrity. But then he has daughters, and he has his own livelihood to think of. So what does he do? He does what most people do. He rats them out. They kill all of them, and the Germans leave, and he gets to go on with his, with his day. Right? So what ends up happening is that the power is so totalizing, right? I've essentially normativized systemic political violence as norm, right? Systemic political violence becomes norm. And I can't make an appeal to anything else but systemic political violence. So if confronted with the threat of being persecuted, what am I going to do? Well, I have two options. I can die with integrity or I can conform. And surprisingly... Um, most people, well, n actually not surprisingly, sort of, sort of like matter-of-factly, most people conform. Most people conform when given the option. Um, the dairy farmer conformed when presented with the option. He did not choose to die with integrity because that is far more difficult to do. It is easy theoretically to say, oh, I would die with integrity. But when confronted with the actual possibility of being exterminated, um, most people do conform to such a threat. So... Imposition, um, systemic political violence becomes the norm. Okay. Um, he then, in uh, almost the, the end of the chapter, uh, Gassette says, or Gassette doesn't say, but my account, what I say is that violence becomes the only ratio. Violence becomes the only norm. Right? Violence becomes the only way of doing business politically under this paradigm. And Gassette has a pretty interesting claim here. He says, We are now beginning to realize this with starting cl startling clearness because direct action consists in inverting the order, proclaiming violence as prima ratio, the first ratio, to unica ratio, the only ratio. So violence has been sort of elevated from the first ratio, the first way that we do business, to Unica ratio, the only way that we do business, right? It's not that violence is the default, but there is nothing other than violence. All that we do is violence. The political state, the fascist state, the totalitarian state recognizes that it is my authority to define everything. 